SoCal is with us. Arda, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back for a third time. The fifth time I expect a blazer. <laughs> yep. uh, we got it on like order. Timer <laughs> jacket. Uh, the, the last yeah. time, you're right. The last time I was here uh, to make sure that shots were had. Uh, <laughs> now, Pete, I will uh, pander to you. I'm wearing a uh, Flyers Marvel gritty mashup shirt just for <laughs> I you. <laughs> I appreciate uh, that. <laughs> it's totally not the right show on this side, but totally the right for the host on this side. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> totally works. I, I still, to this day, can't believe that Philadelphia has embraced Gritty. I really thought we were just going to rip them apart. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you didn't all realize that this is going to become a hockey podcast now. We're going to talk hockey for it's 20 okay. minutes. We're hey, totally fine for it. <laughs> um, well, Arda, we are thrilled that you are back with us again. You've become a part of the crew, and we always love when we get to talk to you and when we get a chance to message you, maybe even live while you're working and trying to blow you up and pester you. But for anybody who may be tuning in tonight or catching this on the replay that doesn't know who you are, give us a quick rundown. Who is Arda Ocal? I am checking those messages, by the way, when, when <laughs> oh, you're just like, hey, I'm uh, say this word yeah. or whatever. I try to throw in the Star Wars reference specifically so you will notice it uh and i definitely do that uh (laughs) so uh, i'm arda i work for espn uh i do nhl sports center that kind of stuff but most importantly like everyone here uh i am a giant star wars nerd and we actually also do a star wars podcast with espn called never tell me the odds which is a lot of fun and it's the best being star wars fan is the best as we all know so here we are it's a i I, i've really gotten into to the never tell me the odds show and i just love the the back and forth and what i love about it is it's what i'm finding so cool is like everybody's star wars fans like those the lines of you know i i remember back in the 90s when star wars was kind of dead uh and i was i was always sort of like yeah uh, uh, i'm a star wars fan and people be like oh okay yeah my son loves star trek too and i'm like nah, not the same thing <laughs> but uh but you you have mentioned in the past that your star wars fandom really kind of blossomed during during this the disney era but mm-hmm. i couldn't help but notice that recently you were in galaxy's edge what did you think of it let's talk a little bit about your galaxy's edge experience so I I was there for a grand total of seven minutes a month ago. <laughs> uh, I was with my oldest daughter. She's four. Uh, okay. She does not like Star Wars at all. So it was pretty heartbreaking for me to walk through Batu and have to like speed run it. And like, do I want to stop there? Oh, I'm a Falcon. Ah, this and that. And I'm just like, uh, I'm not going to be able to experience any of this. Uh, I bought one of those Star Wars themed Coca-Cola bottles. I had enough right. time to do that, and then I just went right to uh, Toy Story Land, uh, <laughs> just right beside, <laughs> right stars, the Galaxy's Edge. Uh, but I went this week. Uh, it was actually a, a shoot for the podcast because we did a a live podcast. It was Star Wars Night at the Tampa Bay Lightning game mm-hmm. the next day, and so the day before we went to Galaxy's Edge to collect some content, uh, and it was awesome. I, I, the The thing I kept saying all morning was the attention to detail is spectacular everywhere i mean even the recycling bins are droids you know like everything is like you feel completely immersed in a star wars land like you feel like you're on batu like it's just awesome uh the the level of detail that they put into it and the level of thought that they put into it and i don't know like you, you can spend hours in there and not be done that's the wild thing like that uh, there and uh just uh, a week or two ago i was in um i was in universal studios for uh for a, for a job which was cool um but um going through the harry potter experience as well is very similar in that even though it's like a bunch of just like people wearing normal everyday clothes you feel like you're in that world somehow and i don't know how they put, I guess it's, it's all that detail. I guess it's all just sort of the, the things that are supporting the experience that, that bring you there. What was your favorite part of it? Was oh, there, Rise was, of the Resistance by far. Yeah. That, that might be the greatest ride I've ever been on. Yeah. And I, I, I had heard it was good, but I didn't think it was that good. Like it was <laughs> spectacular to me. I was like at edge of my seat. Everything yeah. was like, oh my gosh. I even like, by the way, I fell for it. When you walk in that spoiler alert, when you walk in <laughs> and there's like the hundred droid or a hundred stormtroopers in front of you, yeah. For a second, I thought that they were human beings. Yeah. I really did. For <laughs> I, I looked at them and I'm like, wait a minute, if they're moving here, like I fell into it. I was like, there's got to be at least one or two people among yeah. these droids or well, these troopers. 
it's that wild attention to detail that Disneyland and Disney World just get. And I remember I'm gonna screw it up so I won't go into the detail because I will definitely screw up the story. But the whole thing about the 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 winking toucan or something at the tiki bar from 19 mm -hmm. whatever yeah, 70 yeah. And, and just like that kind of detail that they they get you with and because you, you can forget yourself. You can and that's what's so great about that entire Star Wars experience there is you can really just kind of lose yourself in that but I, I think one of the challenges is though and i'd love to hear your thoughts on this because star wars the um uh the uh, galactic cruiser star cruiser mm -hmm. closed and i think that was an experience that may have been a step too far for the average fan like i think like the average fan can walk through batu and just you know and then from there like you said go over to you know toy story land or whatever um but that didn't seem to it seemed to have reached its saturation point pretty quickly unfortunately i didn't get a chance to go but i i often think about like if i brought my wife and my daughter and my son me and my son would be like you know carrying blasters and lightsabers and running around hunting stormtroopers my wife and daughter would be like this is kind of nerdy so <laughs> like, where do you think and, and now apparently there's been some permits pulled so they're doing some work on that what would you like to see as a star wars hotel experience in disney for you and your family i mean i couldn't have afforded the galactic star like the yeah. galactic star cruiser experience sounded awesome right like you're right. completely immersed in a star wars world uh from morning to night and you're there for a couple days it was prohibitive for me like yeah. as a price point i completely understand that Yep, I would love to. But if you told me there was a Star Wars hotel as part of an offering, like, you know, in the same vein as All Star Sports Resort or, you know, all the other hotels mm -hmm. at Disney, I'd be down for that. I would love yeah. a Star Wars themed hotel, even if it was, hey, here's a memorabilia wing or there's yep. some Jedi walking around and stormtroopers yeah. are escorting you to your room. Like I will say this, the other thing that I thought was really impressive about um Galaxy's Edge was the well the 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 show like, you know, the Kylo Rens and the stormtroopers like they're really good. Like they they really get into the the uh the moment and they they're really like very present and they're doing a great job, but also the actors or the people that are working on the rides uh, you know, the members of the Empire or um, even smug Smuggler's Run. Uh, like those act, uh, those people are terrific. Yeah. Like they, re they really mm -hmm. seem like they're enjoying it and they're like, they got jokes. Like it's very well done. Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was standing in line to buy Ahsoka lightsabers last time I was there. Um, and I make it sound like I'm there all the time. I've been there three times over the last four years. <laughs> in the last week. Been, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. I just got back. <laughs> um, but, but even the people in line are like, you know, bright suns and they like, they're playing the game. And it's funny to watch people try to get them to break. And the good ones are just like, Oh no, I'm not familiar with your world <laughs> or whatever. It's pretty cool. So, I love it. So. Well, and you talked about, you guys were there, you know, you collected some content and you've shared, you know, some clips out on your Twitter feed. I don't know if it's from the show or from one of either Clinton mm -hmm. or Ryan, somebody shared some, you know, clips out of you guys with rise of resistance in the falcon all that kind of stuff and something that stood out to me and i would be this way i haven't been yet but i will be this way when i go which was in all three of your faces it was a childlike wonder and joy which i think truly does speak to the detail that disney and imagineering puts into this kind of stuff but also just that thing like we all grew up or came to star wars going oh i want to live there i want to do that and you get to and i think that's really special and it was very to me, it was very noticeable in all three of you guys, just in those few clips that you shared, building a lightsaber, you know, going through those rides. It was neat to see that. Did it feel childlike, I guess? hundred percent. We felt completely immersed. We were overjoyed. I I, I, I told them, you, uh, Clinton Yates and Ryan McGee are the two others mm -hmm. that I do the podcast with. We're literally like three, we're at three completely different corners of espn coming together because of our love for star wars right. and it's the best like we've become great friends uh through our love of star wars and and the passion and basically nerding out about it on every episode that we do right so, so cool. like you know <laughs> discovering that intersection between sports mm -hmm. and star wars which is a lot of fun when we were there like yeah like i told them repeatedly that my cup was full like half an hour after we got there and it's just continuously overflowing mm. for these several hours after like it's just 
it was just the one of the best career experiences, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But it was just like definitely a highlight uh, because it was just so, yeah, like it, 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 you could tell, like you just it just took you back to when you discovered it and fell in love with it, and it just brought your passion to a whole new level. And yeah, like it, it makes you absolutely want to go back several times. I believe it. Well, it, it, there's an there's such an escapism in it. Obviously, you know, you're escaping from a work day. You're able to escape into this fantasy world. Um, and I want to use that as a little bit of a transition here. Also, speaking about escapism, you did something recently that I just ate up every bite of, which is you have a TED talk that mm -hmm. just dropped last week or the week before. And I watched it as soon as I saw that it was out because I was like, hey, I know that guy. I want to hear what he has to say. Yeah. And it spoke directly to me and I messaged you about it after the fact and just was like, this, I could have written this. Like I feel mm -hmm. this exact same way. Tell us about that experience. Tell us about the talk. Give us a little, you know, what it's about. Tell us about art of the Ted talk expert now. And you were the first to message me, actually. I, I want to make, make, make that clear. No, you were the very first person when it That's finally fantastic. posted, you posted months after the fact. And it was okay. like, uh, yeah, you were the very first person when that video got posted. So I appreciate that. Well, it, it's that um, good. I really loved it. I, well, for Star Wars fans, the final third of the talk is all about Star Wars. And I basically right. like I don't want to spoil it too much because I, you know, I'd love for you guys to watch, yeah, go but, check it out yep. watching. But uh, basically, I do a deep dive on Star Wars and and how it like how I find inspiration through watching Star Wars in ways that you may not necessarily consider. And I use uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn as like the sort of centerpiece of that. Uh, it'll make sense if you happen to check it out. But. For yeah. Star Wars fans, I think you'll enjoy it. There's a bunch. There's a couple of the standard Star Wars jokes in there that uh, <laughs> we love to hear. Uh, but uh, but yeah, no, I appreciate that because I'll I'll say this, like people ask like what was the toughest part of doing the TED Talk? Honestly, it wasn't difficult to to be up on in front of a bunch of people talking. It for, especially in my line of work, it was memorizing a 20 minute speech. That was the toughest right. part because. I can ad lib something for half an hour. I can read a prompter mm -hmm. for half an hour. That's no problem. But if you're asking me to memorize word for word something, especially something that I wrote, like that I found to be the most challenging part because then there's this added pressure that I don't normally feel in my job of, oh, I have to like make sure that I know where I am in this speech and there was mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. monitor in front of me to tell me where I am. Like this was all from memory. So oh, that right. was the most stressful part for sure. Well, it's very impressive and it does something else that I love and of course spoke to me and you talked about it even with your co-hosts in the podcast is it brought in sports, it brought in Star Wars and it created this kind of mixed environment where you're like, this speaks to a lot of different people on a lot of different levels. And I think that's something that makes a talk like that successful is you're sharing your real experience, but it can go for the sports guy, the nerd or the ones like me who are both of those things. I, I appreciate that. No mention of Gritty, Pete. I'm sorry. That's all right. Maybe, <laughs> maybe then, maybe the next, maybe I'll do a TED talk on Gritty. Yeah. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> the benefits of Gritty in society. I like that. I like that. But that's it, exactly it is, what it is. It's interesting because I think that there's, that's again, we were kind of saying it before, like Star Wars is like, it really is reaching everybody and we finally have reached this point where it's it's like it doesn't matter if you're you know the jocks or the nerds right if you go back to high school there's like everybody can get into it you can see a guy in a at a down at the local you know mcdonald's wearing a a, a star wars shirt you can see you know it's it's just so baked into everything we do and now it's like it's okay to be a fan and and, and it's funny to say now because it's really it's not a recent phenomenon. It has grown, but it's, I think it speaks to just how deeply, um, deeply a part of our, our, our collective consciousness it is. Um, but speaking of collective consciousness and things, you know, this is the, uh, me and Nick say it all the time. It's a, an embarrassment of riches, all the star Wars coming out, right? We've got, we got acolyte coming next. We've got tales of the Jedi, We've got for your for your daughter who doesn't think Star Wars is cool, she can watch the Young Jedi. Um, we've got Skeleton Crew coming. We've got three movies, four movies on the horizon. What if you could pick one of the things that we know is coming and just watch it tomorrow and be, be you know have it ready for you? Which what are you picking to watch and, and why? To your point about Young Jedi Adventures, yeah, uh, I we have a one year old as well, and I was like, you know what? And I decided this today. 
I was like, yeah. you know what? I'm just going to have her watch Young Jedi Adventures <laughs> just so I could start her as early as possible. And it kind of worked a little bit on the four-year-old too because it's almost like, oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Younger one is just sort of watching it. So maybe I'll finally <laughs> watch it. So like, I think I'm... We're almost there, boys. We're almost so there. Close. Like, like so I can see the inflection point. Like I could <laughs> yeah. just see it. And I'm like, oh, unlimited like, power. Yeah. It's I'm like, like Bluey, so Bluey for, for nerds. That's what we're yes. talking about. Bluey for yes, nerds. Yes, that's how I should yeah. say it. Bluey for nerds. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Um oh man, there's a lot. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, I I I can't wait for I mean, I'm a Thrawn guy. I can't wait for more Thrawn stuff. So Mandalorian Gorgu, right. I hope Thrawn's like the centerpiece of that. Uh, as the on the uh, on the bad guy side, so yeah. I hope that you know I can't wait for that. Um, Acolyte's gonna be interesting because like we don't get much live action High Republic. Like, isn't this the first one? So yeah, so yep. that's gonna be interesting, right? I will say like I so I've I've started to get into the Star Wars comics. Like mm -hmm. I I've 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 started. I've been I'd say about four or five months, and the one that I'm still like struggling to catch up is the high republic era yeah. and i've been told you got to read light of the jedi like that's the starting point like read that book and then you'll be good i have not done that yet and maybe that's why i'm still a little like some of it's like just going over my head pete we were texting about this the other day yeah like yep. it just kind of goes over my head a little bit not yep. that i'm not enjoying it it's just i need to catch up a little bit especially on that era so maybe yeah. acolyte will be a good maybe that'll kind of you know, make it easy for me to dive into mm -hmm. that era and love it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that too. I think it's, um, I think it'll be interesting because I feel like, and maybe it's just this weird sort of spot that I'm in as a fan for, since I saw it in 77 as a kid, it's like, you know, it, it, and it always takes people like the prequels. I I've said it before. I admit I was not a big fan of Phantom Menace when I walked out the door, when I saw it the first time I've since come to, it's one of my it always falls in the top three now which is weird for me because i remember when i walked out <laughs> uh, that wasn't going to be it but maybe that's what this will take maybe the acolyte will make me go i need to know more about that and this time next year perhaps i'll be i'll be all in on it as well but um yeah i i think it's i think that's gonna be interesting i also think so are you have you been watching Bad Batch? Have you are you, yes. have you gotten to the animation? I haven't yet? gotten to the I've I've watched the first two. I haven't watched the third one of the third season yet. Yep. But boy, is it good. I thought it I thought it was tremendous. I loved the addition to lore and canon that it added. Mm -hmm. I love the characters. Uh yeah, I'm I'm a big fan. I think they did a terrific job with that series as a whole. And the, the the trailer with the Saj Ventress all of a sudden like where's oh, where's yeah. this going I'm like where are you kidding me like what's going on here I well, can't wait and, to see how this plays out and I feel like this is something that I talk about every time somebody brings up Bad Batch but even in the first two seasons and certainly continuing now and what we've seen already is not only are the stories good and the characters and like you said for anybody who loves Saj Ventress like to get that tease like just makes you go crazy and get excited but it's such a beautiful show. Like the visuals of it are so spectacular. The music that the Kiner brothers are doing yes, is just yes, like, it's yes. very star Wars. And I caught myself in the first couple of seasons, noticing those things even more and looking at the, you know, the rich backgrounds, the city chase. And I think the second season um, had that very like matte painting feel like it brought back some of those same like early star Wars vibes and feelings. And I'm just going, how great is this that we get something that looks this cool and tells these good stories and it's animated. Like it's not supposed to be quote unquote <laughs> for a 45 year old man, but it's freaking awesome. And I can't, I don't care. Like it's great. And it's so rich though, too. Like that's the thing. Like it's almost like people are, I know that there's people out there that will sort of like dismiss the animated part of it and almost right. like miss out on the, on these like wonderful, lovely stories because mm -hmm. it's not live action. Like some people will just stick to the live action, which is totally fine. Right but you're missing out on these like incredible stories. Yeah. And to take that to the extreme, that's how I felt about rebels for the first, I was like, what is this rebels thing? And then I watched it. It's one of my favorite star Wars things, period. End of sentence. Star Wars rebels is that good. And the stories and the lore that it develops to me is just top level. I think we, we, I think when you were on the first time, I think we talked a little bit about how Star Wars does work on those multiple levels. I always think of like, to me, one of the best multi-tiered, multi-level stories 
of all time is the movie The Matrix because mm-hmm. it works on if you just want to watch a fun, crazy action cyberpunk movie, there it is. But if you want to get down to religious overtones and philosophy and all that, that's there too. And that's why I think Star Wars continues to work is it's yeah, I watched so I watched the the last three episodes of season two with my son who hadn't watched it yet. And um uh watching tech die again was like somebody started cutting onions in my room because it was like it <laughs> was it was it worked and it shouldn't work like as an, it's a cartoon and and it just it really it pulls you in because you just care so much about the characters you care so much about everything that's going on there um so um pete i'm really hoping i don't know anything i'm really hoping for a somehow he returned yeah <laughs> i'm really really hoping here all right fingers <laughs> crossed man yep I don't yeah, know. They, they say no one's ever really gone. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, they they cut Darth Maul in half, and he came back as the baddest villain in the world. So, you know, I, I think what a comeback! Happen. What a comeback! <laughs> he fell, man. Like he was down that that pit, and then all of a sudden, he's even better than before. Yeah, I always say he's what he a came legend. Back, he came back as sort of the Joker of Star Wars. He's like all about chaos and just. <laughs> oh, it was. Great By the way, stuff. um, yeah. I uh, at Star Wars night. At, at Emily Arena, where the lightning play, uh, Maul was the best by far. Like the best cosplayer was Darth Maul, and like he was like perfect. Like the That's horns, so cool. the, yeah, everything. And I just yeah. was like, "How long does this take you?" And he was like, "Ah, about two and a half to three hours." And my wife helps me, and it just I just can't imagine. I just imagine like this guy, you know, he's sitting there, and like his wife is like, you know, patiently like painting every stroke, and they're just like, you know, <laughs> having a normal love conversation. Right there. Like, that's exactly what i thought i was like that is yep. that is 100 percent true love if your spouse yep. is helping you with makeup that takes about two and a half to three hours to complete right i can only imagine asking my wife hey listen i'm going to the game tonight would you mind <laughs> painting my face as mall help me with the horns again i, I don't uh... <laughs> help me with the horns again yeah <laughs> There's there's a new shirt. Help me with the horns, with the horns again, will you? Oh again. man, yeah. <laughs> well, outstanding. Oh man. Well, Arda, I got to thank you once again for hanging out with us. This has has been a blast. We'll have to have you back. We're going to make you a regular if you're not careful. Uh, but we do have the blazer on order. Um, thank we'll you. Just, yes, we'll, we'll, imperative. Uh, we'll... Okay, I will. <laughs> I will hold out on 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 uh, appearance number five until yeah. like I want ATG live. I want the logo yep. here, the jacket. and on, on the inside, I want a big number five. Like I want. I ju- I am just waiting. Well, right, we. I, I. Well, I got it. Speaking of blazers, I got to ask because I picked up. I was. Like, What's the little sunglasses thing on? on oh, that's Arda's my jacket. Uh, so I put a tie bar. Yeah, a sunglasses tie bar mm-hmm. here. Yep. Ah, it's just like a gimmick. It's just like something to, you know, like a, just a cute little way to stand out. Like that. I've just been doing that uh, for years, and yeah. I just, I don't know. It's just people are like, ah, it's cool. Like, and yeah. that I keep going on with it, and no one, no <laughs> one has ever told me not to do it. You know, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing it. Yep. Why not? Why not? <laughs> exactly. Any way to stand out, people. Yeah. Well, stand hey, out, boys. We'll, you know how it is. We'll, we'll make sure your blazer. Um... Your blazer has, has, it room has for it. stitching <laughs> on it. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah. Boys, well, bring uh, me back anytime, Pete, Nick. You know I love this. So you guys are absolutely. you guys rock. So like, I, I let's not wait till Nick's next birthday for me to crash and get him to have another shot. All right, uh, for right. sure. In fact, uh, Nick, Nick, as soon as we go to break, you're going to be doing some shots. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> well, Arda, thank you so much, man. We will talk to you again soon. See you, boys. And we'll be back with more ATG Live.